Are you curious what Thursday's surprise game update was about and if it had any impact on mods? Hello, my name is Jennifer and welcome to my Sims 4 news video. So I'm going to cover that. I'm also going to go over the expected timing of the release of the Creators Kit coming out next week and the announcement that EA Answer Headquarters is closing down and migrating over to the new EA forums. But first, let's talk about that update. So The Sims Direct tweeted and shared on other social media, including The Sims Discord. Simmers, we released a small update that resolves player reports of transferring Sims across households and missing objects from gallery uploads. For more information on the other fixes, check out the patch notes and they link to the patch notes, which we're going to get to. But first, I'm just going to show the basic steps to prepare for computer players, though this was a minor update and it didn't even disable mods. So we can kind of skip part of that. One thing I would suggest you still do is if you have any saves you really care about, I'd still suggest you back up your saves. I know I did. I did repair my game. I'm in the EA app or if you're on Origin on an older Mac. On Steam, this is Verify Game Files, and also I did delete my local thumb cache file. If your mods have already been updated for the October 22nd game update, then they should be fine. So far, I'm not seeing any reports of any issues. So that whole reminder, that's not true. I do have a tutorial video if you want more details, but this was a pretty simple game update. So here's sort of the cover. So it was life and death launch fixes is what they're titling it. And you can see there's not a lot of patch notes. So it was an update covering a series of quick fixes for issues reported with the 10-22-2024 update and the Sims 4 Life and Death expansion pack. And they're still saying to go to Answers HQ to share any issues you're experiencing because they are still using it. So the bug fixes there are three noted for base game and one for life and death. The first one there is splitting the household and moving out through the phone is now possible. That actually links to the older bug report. I just did a video on the this issue with moving and splitting out, which was an issue with moving out at live mode. But the new bug report, which is also fixed and not linked here, is that you couldn't even create a new household at Manage Worlds level, and now you should be able to. I've tested it, it worked for me, and I know a couple other people who tested it and it worked for them. So that does indeed appear to be fixed. The other bug report, there was an issue for some people where they couldn't move out at all with the phone. I was only able to move out one SIM and no more SIMs. I could now move out more than one SIM from lib mode using the split from household and move. But I didn't have the other issue, so hopefully both issues were fixed. That's what they're saying. If you have the other issue, I suggest heading over and checking if it's not locked. Or, and if it is locked, just create a new bug report for it. The other issue here that has a link to a bug report is that um, objects placed at the edge of a lot, i.e. with move objects, uh, will no longer disappear when importing a lot from the gallery. So if you had move objects on and you have something just a smidge off, those things were disappearing and now they shouldn't disappear. And the other one isn't even linked to a bug report. Pregnant Sims from the gallery can no longer become ghosts and create a Sim, which I did as <laughs> I tested it and it you used to, right after the update, be able, I took a pregnant sim from the gallery and I turned them into a ghost. They just had a regular baby and then they couldn't try for a baby afterwards. So it was real, no, no real harm done in it, but um, unfortunately no longer possible, possibly with mods, but not without mods. And, and I say possibly, probably with mods, but not without mods. And uh, for life and death, the modern Grim Pressions counter and modern Grim Pressions kitchen sink teal color swatches should now match. So since it's not expected that mods should be impacted by the update, Luth is reusing her list from October 22nd, which as I said, did affect a lot of mods. So here's just like the intro to it. So you can see the index and you can go check that out. But one thing to note here, on the left hand side near the bottom, beginning November 5th, mods hosted only on Mod The Sims are not going to be covered here. And Scarlett has said the same thing and she has a post um, that explains it. And I did do a separate video that was because we got five mods that were uploaded with malware. That was a Sims 4 script file. It wasn't the modders, they, their accounts essentially got hacked and something got 
put up there. Three of them were Twisted Maxi, which Twisted Maxi doesn't put his mods really on Mod The Sims anymore. You need to go to his site and then you're safe. But that does bring up the fact that if you use mods or custom content, you really should have Twisted Maxi's mod guard in your game because it will detect most issues with this. And this malware was like a data miner, a data scraper, trying to get information, you know, your banking and all that type of stuff. It wasn't there to hurt your computer. It was to try and get information from you. It was, from what I can understand, only up for about an hour before it got caught. So it got caught and taken down. So hopefully nobody got caught out in that. And I do have a separate video, but just to reiterate that, the importance of having Twisted Maxi's mod guard if you use mods or custom content in your game. So there was a post here on Deadpool's Discord where essentially he talks about the patch and says that it's a small patch to prepare for the upcoming kits. I had seen that the October 22nd update already prepared us for the kits, so I'm not sure whether this update was to prepare for the kits or if it was just really an emergency patch to fix for those issues that we've already discussed. But regardless, the kits are coming out next week. Uh, that's November 14th is the announced launch date and the usual time is usually 10 a.m. Pacific. So they did a blog post about the making of The Sims 4 Creator Kits, which I covered in a separate video. And I'm just showing this to show that November 14th release date. So we have the Creator Sim Sweet Slumber Party by Triliac over there on the left. And on the right, we have by Shino Sun's Cozy Kitsch. Kitsch? whatever. That's a build by kit and that's what's coming out. And if you're curious what time that should be, there's like a meeting planner that shows some main time zones. 10 a.m. Pacific, as I said, is the usual time for release of kits. And I will link down below so you can find out when that is in your own time zone, assuming that that's when it should launch, which is usually when it does. Moving on, as I did mention that uh, EA Help actually tweeted to give the heads up that Answers HQ is moving to EA Forms in 2025. And once they migrate the content, AHQ will be shut down. And then they have a link to what it means for your posts and profile. So they're migrating the content and then shutting it down. So here is the uh, post that has essentially the summary of it. So when is it shutting down? Their plan is February 2025, but they'll keep us updated with exact dates. It then goes on to talk about whether your posts will be migrated to the EA forums. And they say they'll migrate most of the content, including posts, images, and boards for active EA games and services. They're also going to be migrating bug reports and videos you've uploaded to your galleries won't be migrated. Then they talk about whether your profile will be migrated to the EA forums. And it says active users and content will be migrated to EA forums. Your profile, your XP, and all its content will be migrated to EA forums if you meet either of the following criteria. So either you've logged into Answers HQ at least once since January 1st, 2022, or you've made at least one post in the past and you've logged into Answers HQ at least once since January 1st, 2019. So there's three years earlier if you've ever made a post. They're also going to migrate most of the badges you've earned and this may take longer and may look different on the new site. Well, I'll believe that when I see it. They didn't do a very good job of migrating some things with the Sims 4 gallery changes they did. Anyways, then they talk about what won't be migrated. So profile settings, profile biography, direct messages, subscriptions, avatars, and macros. Then they talk about if you don't want to migrate your profile, to opt out, you need to delete your Answers HQ account by January 22, 2025. And deleting your account is permanent and there's no way to recover it once it's been deleted. And you can create a new Answers HQ account, but it won't be connected to any content shared from your old account. Now, here's how to delete your account. They have details there. If you actually are planning on doing that, I suggest you pull up this site and look at it and follow it step by step. And then they talk about whether deleting the Answers HQ account will delete the EA account. And they say, no, these steps won't delete your EA account 
only your Answers HQ account, which is why I'm saying you should follow this because you want to make sure you're only deleting your Answers HQ account. And then they do have a link to how the EA forums work. I have not actually use them. The few times I've tried to go over, I think at least half of the time I can't log in, but I haven't tried recently in all fairness. So hopefully it's better. And hopefully if it's not, hopefully it's better soon. So have you used the new EA forums? And if so, how did you find it? I'd love to know that. And also whether or not you've updated and how you found that in a comment down below. But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!